Hey, good evening, everyone. Happy Wednesday. Sorry, this is coming to you a little bit later. It's been a pretty full day with, again, a lot of good things going on, uh, some meetings, uh, events. I got to do a live uh, chapel with the preschool kids again today. Hopefully many of them got to see that. And then, of course, uh, later this afternoon, this evening, we had that uh, farewell event uh, for Larry Keppel. Uh, thank you to so many of the members that took the time to drive through, stop by, wish him God's blessings. Uh, we're going to miss him around here. Thankful for all those years. One of our charter members of our Savior's Lutheran Church uh, heading up to Wisconsin uh, on more of a permanent basis. We're hoping he's able to come down with family, friends, visit from time to time, but uh, he's heading up there to make uh, living by family his permanent home. So uh, God's blessings to uh, Larry. And uh, again, we thankful that we were able to have this uh, little farewell event. It sure wasn't what we had hoped for, thought about, but here we are still dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, the challenges and issues that are all on with that. And yet in the midst of that, we have an incredible God, such an awesome God who loves us, who is there, who is helping us. And that's going to be part of my focus on the words I want to uh, share again today as we uh, take this time on this Wednesday, halfway through the week, to just pause for a minute, ask for God's uh, guidance, His blessing, His encouragement through His Word. And so let's take a listen to these words from the Apostle Paul. And uh, again, I guess part of my inspiration on that uh, this evening was the fact that uh, in chapel uh, today with the preschool families, I got to uh, highlight uh, how Paul, we know him as, as that was actually a man named Saul, who was a great persecutor of the Christian church and uh, persecuting those that followed the way, which was part of our gospel reading for that last Sunday, where we were reminded how Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. Uh, many early followers were called that they were part of the way uh, in, in reference to that statement and phrase that Jesus is the way. Saul had persecuted um, specifically Jewish families, Jewish people that were forsaking the Old Testament uh, ways, the customs of the Jewish people to follow Christ and to declare themselves as Christians. Uh, but what happened there? Well, God came to Saul, converted him, stopped him in his tracks as he was heading to Damascus, called him to, to, to fellowship. And again, what do we have? We have the results of God's incredible Grace. We have the results before us in the in the words of the New Testament as God inspired the Apostle Paul. One and the same, Saul is turned into Paul, the great greatest Christian missionary uh, that the church has ever known uh, has, has been blessed with. And it is some of those words from Paul tonight that again, as he wrote to the Christians in Rome, giving them encouragement from Romans chapter 5, uh, two very beautiful. Uh, powerful words, peace and joy, peace and joy. And they come together, don't they? Uh, when we're at peace, talk about true joy, wonderful joy. When things are fine, when we're calm, when all is reconciled, we have a sense of peace with us and there's this joy. Let's listen to Paul's words, the opening verses of chapter five. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we've gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, now here's the kicker. We also rejoice in our sufferings. Why? Because we know, Paul goes on, that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. Rejoice in the Lord always. Philippians 4.4, 4, one of my favorite passages. Rejoice in the Lord always. 
And now we tie that in with Paul's words here. We also rejoice in our sufferings. Are you suffering? Are you hurting because of challenges with this COVID-19 pandemic? Uh, again, uh, the, the, the Lord is using this situation for so many various reasons. And his will, his good and gracious will is being accomplished. But in the midst of that, people are suffering. There is great uh, concern, not just about the virus and flattening the curve and, and, and being cautious and us even moving forward cautiously, being considerate of our fellow Christians, being considerate of our brothers and sisters in Christ that the leadership team again um, yesterday evening wrestled with. And though you know, so many are thinking and personally thinking, well, we, let's just do church. Let's, let's get back. Let's get back to normal. Let's just do church. That when we listen to the guidelines being presented by the CDC, when we're being reminded of the, the things we want to guard against and protect and everything, again, a spirit of Christian love coming from our, our leadership team that though personally they'd be like, as I myself, let's just do church. They're saying no. It's still proper and right to wait, even though this is hard. Uh, it, hard, hard in so many different ways. But what we know, God has a plan. God has a purpose. And even if we're suffering, good things are going to happen. Because suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope, hope in God trusting in his promises, knowing God is with us, that'll never be a disappointment for us. It doesn't disappoint. God is by our side. Again, during Larry's farewell, I had a chance to, to speak about this and encourage. And one thing that I just paused in one of the conversations uh, was to, again, note, you know, the, how, how awesome that in our suffering right now, in our inability to be able to gather together for public worship, to enjoy that fellowship that God desires of us to come together in, 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 in unity, to come together physically, to, to be together, to worship, but that we can't do that because of this pandemic health scare right now. And it's hard and we're, 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 we're missing it. And yet what's going to happen? I, I trust, I feel the fulfillment of these words are going to be highlighted that when we gather together, friends, never again, I don't think, for these generations will we ever take for granted the opportunity to gather for public worship. When we start coming back together again, the joy, the excitement, the, the, the appreciation for, for what we have, will be there in such a unique way that I would pray and think in, I pray my lifetime, my children's lifetime, maybe even my grandchildren's lifetime, if God allows us that much time here on earth, that we'll, we'll never simply take for granted the chance to gather for worship. And that those times when we gather on Sunday mornings or Saturday evenings or Monday nights or Wednesday evenings or whenever we, we have those chances to gather for a worship service, a Bible study, a meeting, wow, what a blessing that'll be. Why? Because we endured this. We, we suffered. We hurt. We, we, uh, our, our norm was challenged, and, but we endured, and that suffering has produced perseverance. We're persevering. This would be something that we can say we, we hung on to and, and God blessed us. And we have that character, that strength then, and reminds us, we got through this, we can get through anything. God is hope. And he gives us that hope to trust in him every day. This is the blessing that we have, friends, this gift from God, even in the midst of our struggles. And, and maybe you're suffering, maybe you're hurt right now, has nothing to do with this COVID-19 pandemic, right? That there are other things happening in people's lives. We've got people struggling with maybe their, their relationships with family, 
uh, they're, they're struggling with their, their partner in life, their marriages are struggling, uh, people are dealing with emotional uh, heartache and hurt and fear, uh, such a focus, such a panic, right? And that's what a gift, right? That we as Christians, though, we want to be healthy and stuff. I'm not terrified of this virus. If God would say, I'm going to call you home and I'm going to call you home by you contracting this virus and it attacks your lungs and you can't breathe and there's no help and I, and I, uh, leave this earth, I'm going to heaven. I got that comfort. I have that assurance. I have that guarantee. Not that I have a, a death wish. I want to see my children's families grow up. I want to see these grandkids get bigger and to celebrate and have fun with them. I want to, I want to enjoy the, the, the time that we have here each day, and I'm excited for that. Yet I'm not afraid. We don't need to be afraid of death because we have this hope that's been strengthened because of the suffering that we've gone through. And again, whether it's the, 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 the challenges and trials because directly connected to this pandemic or maybe other things that the pandemic and the isolation, the staying at home orders are nothing compared to the other things you're having to deal with and suffer with, whether it be physically, emotionally, relationships, challenges with the job, with an employer, with employees, whatever. Friends, God comes to us and reminds us you now we can rejoice. We can rejoice in the hope of the glory because through that suffering is perseverance, character, and hope. We get hope. Hope in God and knowing he never disappoints us. Friends, what a gift. What a blessing that is. So, again, we take comfort and rejoice that we have an awesome, gracious loving God. Praying for all of you. I'm asking God's guidance, his blessing, his strength. I, I thank the Lord for all of you for the wonderful support. Uh, we're still trying to communicate, do the best we can. Please know we'll be putting together another online worship service for this coming weekend. And from now on, the leadership team, we're going to be in communication. We're going to be watching things and it's week to week. So Maybe next week we'll be able to gather together in public or we'll still have to persevere. We'll still have to hang on and it might be two weeks. Uh, week by week right now, we're going to take a look at this and get ready for that opportunity and time that when we do gather, it's a time of joyfulness. It's a time of, of wonderful worship. You know, and we could. We could come together right now following some certain guidelines and, and cautious. But understand part of the caution, what they're saying is that if you do gather for worship, the recommendation is do so, but no singing. No, no joining together in praise and singing out because that could be a potential easy spread. Well, so maybe we need to wait a week or two yet and let some things still calm down and get a handle and control. And because when we do come together, we want to join our hearts and voices in worship and praise to our glorious God, for he is deserving of all glory and honor because he is a God who does not disappoint us. He is a God who does not lie. God's peace to all of you, and may that hope reign strong in your hearts and lives, the hope of Jesus' awesome love. God's peace. Thank you for giving me the time to talk to you again this evening. I, I pray this message is received with uh, encouraging, loving hearts, joyfulness, and uh, again, God's peace. We pray. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. You guys have a great night or a great day, depending on when you're watching this, and we'll talk soon. Blessings.